summertime. Baby, in the summertime, <laughs> that is where I'll be. Take me back to the, the sweet times, the hot nights. Everything is gonna be alright in the summertime. Baby, in the summertime. <laughs> Hello. All righty. Uh, uh, welcome to Between the Flags. This is episode two, the second ever Bondi Rescue live stream show for 2020. Uh, right here on the official Bondi Rescue page. Uh, we are celebrating our 15th year of Bondi Rescue, and we have three wow. of our favorite lifeguards in the world. Uh, we have Hoppo, uh, we have Dino, and we have Maxi. Three of the uh, old school guys, and um, they're here to tell you a few stories, which we're all looking forward to. Thank you to everybody who has tuned in from all around the world. Last week, we had over 93 countries uh, tuning in from around the world, which is pretty insane. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll hit 100 uh, this week. What we're going to be doing today, we're going to be hearing more from our wonderful guests. We're going to be sharing some of our favorite moments from Bondi Rescue from season 15 and also previous seasons. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lifeguard version of Never Have I Ever, which is a pretty fun game. If you don't know about it, you'll find out how that works soon enough. Um, and also this week we have Super Chat. So this will make our job a little bit easier. Basically last week we had uh, five comments a second um, and over 19,000 comments in one live stream. So that made it very hard for us to see what people were asking so we're going to be trying super chat see how it works that'll help us make selections of what questions to ask we won't only take it from super chat but we will do our best and finally we'll also be announcing the winner of the limited edition bondi rescue uh gold embossed hoodie um so that's gonna be pretty cool um just checking in on the stream um everything is looking good um hold on one second i'm gonna make sure i've got the stream up here so i can see what you guys are saying and and finally of course before i jump into that also just wanted to note that uh thank you everyone who is stuck at home with coronavirus it is not the best time in the world um for everybody everyone's going through difficult times um so um hi from california says somebody called coronavirus hello from queensland new zealand lily bateson thank you guys we are watching everything you were saying connie woods maxi she has some questions for you maxi but you're gonna have to save it so first of all <laughs> let's start with the top dog again hoppo um so now you're in back with the new recruits you're in with the old boys actually jumping in with all three of you what's it like to be old school uh in the bondi old crew school. Oh, you did a good bag. You did a good bag. You did a That's one of the main, <laughs> main comments we have. You guys look the same age. It doesn't look like you've actually changed. Oh, Maxi, that's no good for you. Uh, Maxi's always been, Maxie's always <laughs> been told he's the youngest uh, old bloke going around. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually 60 in, uh, in those years, in, in real years, but I'm only 28. <laughs> No, he, I have, he, I'll tell you what, Maxi, your eyebrows have got really solid there. Like, there's a solid eyebrow game you've got going on. So, um, I, 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 I want some. Uh, eyebrow on point. Did Talia just <laughs> fix them up for you before you got on? Pluck them, mate. Yeah. Pluck them. Pluck them. Looking like Johnny, Johnny Howard, he's looking like. Sure. Are we starting with the old dogs, Hoppo? <laughs> I've only got the old jokes. You're so old, you walked into an antique store and they kept you. A lot of guys are, are asking, um, yeah. what is it like now that all the beaches are closed? Now that, now that Bondi, Bronte, and Tamarama are all closed due to coronavirus, 
Uh, and what, what's the, what's going on now, Hoppo? What's going on at the beaches across across uh, that you guys looking after? Oh yeah, look, it's pretty uh, quiet down there now. There's no one around, and it, it's a bit eerie. It's totally different to what we're used to, and we usually have thirty, forty thousand people. So, you know, everyone's just uh, hanging around. But we're doing a lot of, um, you know, paperwork and, and uh, operations manuals, and and working on all the back end stuff that we don't really get much time to do during the year. Right, oh, right, and and then I believe in the uh, in the off off season you're training for the World Ocean Ski Championships in Portugal. Is that true? Yeah, I, I, I made the Australian team for uh, the Worlds in Portugal in September. So it, it, as long as it still goes ahead, I'm not sure. Has that uh, been cancelled? How, how we're going? Well, it hasn't been cancelled yet, so I'm oh, still hanging in there. But yeah. yeah, yeah. So hopefully yeah, we're right. uh, all good to go for September. Insane, yeah. insane. Now. Maxi, I believe you uh, recently got married, which is going to be a huge disappointment for so many women around the world. Um, is it true? Yes, I just got married in February, just before all this uh, COVID-19 stuff kicked off. I managed to have a great day and uh, had a great honeymoon as well. But there's a lot of friends and family that I know in the last couple of you know, hoppo in saying that. And there's a few other people I know that I work in the fire, fire brigade that had to cancel their weddings or postpone them. So very fortunate to get it in but i could feel the pain of people around the world having to cancel their special day absolutely and speaking of the special day so you're a lucky man for that you've managed to squeeze a honeymoon in in the maldives of course he doesn't want to have a honeymoon in the maldives and somehow you are now it's hard to explain but you are somehow a lifeguard and a firefighter and a book author and you're doing lots of crazy stuff but first of all, tell us about the firefighting. Like, how long did it take you to become a firefighter? Because you were a lifeguard and you're already pretty awesome, did they just accept you immediately, or what was nah. the deal? Nah. So, so ever since I was two years old, I always wanted to be a firefighter, and then uh, obviously did the traineeship with the lifeguard. Since I turned 18, I applied for the fire brigade, and it took me six years. I got in at 24, and I can't believe it. I've, I've been in four and a half years now, and um, I'm a qualified firefighter, and I'm part of the heavy rescue squad out of the city. So, yeah, it's good. Keeps me busy. Uh, I'm going to ask you more questions about that later. Now, Dino, um, you know, you're a very important man down at the beach. You've been a full-timer for a long time down there. So, you know, from what I gather, you've been doing a lot of pretty crazy stuff. You've been coaching your son in rugby. You've been doing, like, your own breath courses with Wim Hof, that sort of stuff. Uh, what else is going on in your world? What other, what other huge things are happening in, in Dino land? Oh, uh, well, everything stopped at the moment. Um, I was hoping to take the kids surfing to the Mentawis in June, July, and it's, it's looking all but cancelled. And, um, you know, I was a little bit down with this, all this corona stuff, but then I realised, you know, there's some, there's some people much worse off than myself. Um, so, yeah, just sort of one day at a time, um, remaining positive. I'm homeschooling the kids today. Um, so they're just awesome. they've got some free time at the moment. Um, no doubt they'll they'll come in and want something from me at some stage during <laughs> this call. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah we, we'll do some handstands and we'll we'll play later some cartwheels uh, in between in between Sweet. lessons. So yeah. you're looking you're looking after the little family. I mean that's a very important time right now, right? Everyone's stuck at home. Uh, hanging out with the family, staying away from the old folk, by the way, people, obviously, mm. uh, if you love them, stay away from them, make sure they don't get sick. Uh, but Dino's not too old yet, so he can still hang out with his children. Um, <laughs> unlike Hoppo, who's unfortunately can't hang out with his kids because they're too afraid to get him sick. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, okay, moving on. So, guys, thank you very much. Uh, it's great to hear what's going on. Anyone in Super Chat, um, by the way, we have uh, another person in our team who is taking your comments and making sure we ask those questions as well. Um, so we'll be coming back to you on those questions shortly. Um, but before we jump into some of these questions, um, we're going to be cutting to a video. Um, now, Hoppo, uh, you are here for this moment. Uh, you guys should be able to see it shortly. Um, basically, this is on Christmas Day. It's near the end of a shift, and I'll let you watch and see what happens next. Oh, sorry, it's uh, the Jackson clip. Okay. Ah, very professional here. Uh, the clip is coming in three, two, and maybe very oh, short. So I got out into the girl, and um, she was actually in good spirits. As soon as she spoke to me, I could smell a bit of alcohol in her breath. I got, geez, 
She's had a good day this fine. I said, oh, do you want to lift in? And she said, please, I'm Bianca. I'm Jackson. Hop on. <laughs> I thought, well, I feel like I'm on some sort of speed date. I've got her in, and she's sort of gotten really up at my grill. I thought, oh, Bianca's getting a bit close here. What's doing? I'm not sure I approve this behaviour on the beach. To be fair to Jackson, he was still acting professional, and he was trying to keep her at arm's length. I've worked out here for a while, and uh, I've been congratulated before, but the way she sort of went in, it was definitely unexpected. So, um, <laughs> professionalism on the beach, um, you know, uh, Hoppo, um, what's it like dealing with, uh, you know, you've got a lot of dreamy lifeguards down there. No, guy, no doubt you guys try to get, you know, pashed all the time. Has that ever happened to you, Hoppo? Oh, yeah, over the years, yeah. You get a few people coming. <laughs> Long time ago. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> It was back in the dinosaur days, Maxi. We used to walk around with our clubs. Steve, that <laughs> actually <laughs> happened to me <laughs> on my first shift, uh, which was also a Christmas really? day, and that was in the year 2000, yeah. So um, Christmas Day must bring out the love in people. So, so what's the protocol there, Hoppo? You know, if, if, if one of your boys uh, gets approached, what's, what, what, how do you deal with it as uh, a professional lifeguard? <laughs> Oh, well, Jackson handled it pretty well. So, uh, yeah, well, ever the cameras are rolling. Yeah, it, it does look pretty good. And, and Max, has this ever happened to you? Uh, not really, nah. I don't know. It's always the older older <laughs> birds and the people uh, with the, the dodgy undies. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, last night's episode, there was a funny bit of, uh, was it Jackson? Or um, someone did a rescue where... Uh, yeah, the, Jackson the again. He had undies. undies. It was all time. But um, that was. There's been a few over the years. Pretty. Well, Danny McKellar got the nickname Dan, Danny yeah. Bumsmeller after he he rescued a nosedive. Nose dude. Dive. Uh, nose <laughs> dived and his face went straight up the clacker. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you have a lot of pretty serious situations where you uh, you literally shoved into some uncomfortable positions. Uh, but it seems like you guys will take it in your stride. Um, hey, I'm just going to go back to some of the super chats here. Um, Tyler Dodd, Mason Winyard says, I love the show from Iowa in the US. Um, Bobby Scott and Sky Laxton. Uh, Lucy Wood, Lucy Wood, if she could, says, hello, love from England. So these guys are calling out from everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> so Molly in Charleston says, y'all are delicious. Uh, which I presume is a very friendly uh, commentary. Thank you, Molly. Um, Rian Resma uh, says hello and good night from the Netherlands. Um, so people are coming in from all around the place. Uh, Izzy Owens says thank yous for your hard work. A lot of love for all. And shout out to Fionn Buckley. Uh, so just going to be doing a few calls to that super chat. Now, before. And now that we've gone from that first video, we're going to be cutting to the second video. Now, Maxi, you are featuring in this video. This is from Season 15, Episode 2. Um, so international fans may have seen this clip from last week. We're going to play it again for everybody. And going now. Oh, Maxi Bushbite. Sorry about that. And... As well as being a lifeguard, Maxi is a professional firefighter. You're an hour from the actual action, and as you're driving down the freeway trying to get to these little townships, you're getting red messages sent saying they're losing multiple houses. You, you try and get there as quick as you can, and every second literally counts. Just over an hour south of Sydney, Maxi's unit was fighting a fire front 60 kilometres wide as it moved towards the town of Buxton. Uh, you know, a number of houses got lost. Uh, and unfortunately, two firefighters passed away. Um, you know, it's a real deal. And I don't think we're going to get a breather anytime soon. Uh, they're predicting extreme weather conditions for the next two months, right up to, there's no rain right up till March, apparently. So there's fires burning everywhere. And, um, you know, I'm back on shift again tomorrow and we'll see where I could, be in, I could end up anywhere. 
There you go. So, what's that like for you, Maxie? You know, in, in being, <laughs> a, I guess, a, a first responder in a situation in a, in a in a bushfire. Well, um, a lot of people don't really. So, I'm a firefighter in the city of Sydney. So, all a lot of the fires that happened over New Year's and in early December um, were around Sydney, and then obviously New Year's was down south and. When your unit gets called, there's not enough resources elsewhere. So we could end up two, three, four hours away from our station sometimes. Um, you know, it's for a couple of weeks there, it was quite full on. You know, we're getting a shift, we didn't know where we we're going. And then there's times where we're going to house fires in Sydney and we're by ourselves for 15, 20 minutes. So didn't matter if it was bushfires mm. or car accidents or house fires, people were still needing help in our station area. So. It was a very crazy time. And then coming to this COVID nineteen, I, I think twenty twenty has been been a bit of a hard hard start uh, to the to the year. And a lot of people have you know lost a lot, lost a lot, lost their houses, lost their businesses. And then this is just an add on this COVID nineteen to um, yeah, it's just it's just crazy full on. So so how do you manage that stress emotionally? Um, oh. As I get older, I love physical exercise. I uh, try and go for runs or try and go do Pilates or um, listen to classic classic music. Not classic as in uh, orchestra, um, just, you know, the 80, 80s Aussie rock or something just to get the upbeat songs happening. Stay physical um, and just talk about uh, the jobs and incidences I've been to and being part of the lifeguards. Um, that's a great team environment. I go down there and I tell the guys some of the stories that I have as a firefighter and then vice versa. I could have a really heavy incident at the beach and I go tell the guys at the fire station about medical emergencies and stuff like that. So both jobs complement each other, which is, which is awesome. Yeah. That's insane, mate. It's very impressive. I've got to say uh, a lot of responsibility and uh, very impressive what you're doing. So a lot of respect from oh, not only from you, me and, and from, you know, both you guys there, but also a lot of the, a lot of the fans as well, are, you know, oh, very impressed. You. And, yeah. Um, is there anything anything you'd, you'd you'd put out there to somebody who wants to become a firefighter or, or a lifeguard? Yep. Obviously, you've been through both. It's it's uh you know what's what's your motivation? Yeah, just be persistent. Uh, it took me six times to be getting the fire brigade, but as a lifeguard, Hoppo gave me an opportunity. Um, you know, going down there doing work experience, just hanging around the tower, getting in touch with Hoppo and the team leaders, show that you're keen, um, do your exercises, know how to you know know your beach know um, your customer service and then hopefully if there's a spot available and Hoppo and the, the team can um, review and you know there's we've got two trainees on at the moment um, each year we're, we're rolling them over so if you want to be a lifeguard you know get involved and firefighting um, every year Fire and Rescue New South Wales have a, um, a, a what do you call it a word's gone out of my head uh, intake people can sign up for <laughs> intake yeah once a year uh, intake and there's about 13,000 people apply for 100 jobs. So you really need to be wow. invested and uh, you need to really get involved your local fire stations and know what the job is. It's not just about five and fires or dealing with car accidents. There's a lot of other stuff that, that takes to be a role as a firefighter. So just be persistent, uh, be yeah. patient. And if it's your dream job, you'll get it. That yeah, Maxie insane. was one of our insane. early trainees and, and he just, we couldn't get rid of him, could we, Hoppo? Like, he just used to turn <laughs> up on school days and on his day off and it's like, yeah. you know, he was... Yeah, I was a gonzo, I was a gonzo, I was a gonzo. he used to just rock up at work <laughs> every day, like, you know, if, if you wanted something from the loved shop, it. he'd go and get it for you. And But, you know, he, he set a new bar and, and like, people... People ask me, like, what have I got to do? And it's like, you've got to follow your dream. If you really want something to happen, like, Maxie made it happen. And, um, happen. you know, Harrison is another great example, you know. He, mm. he was living in New Zealand and coming over to Bondi on holidays and literally, mm. again, through persistence and and Was it and two, two or three times, and, Dana? Was it two, three yeah, times? Yeah, like, multiple three times. times. Yeah. Um, and yeah, same with Mar Mario. Over. Mario. Mario, even though he didn't do a traineeship, but Mario is the same thing. He wanted to be a lifeguard at Bondi so bad. You know, he went to the Sunshine Coast, did lifeguard up there, yep, come down right. here, did the paddling, and he went back to Italy, come back, and then Hoppo gave him an opportunity. And yeah, it's, it's people just want to be there, they get a start. Yeah, you got to show you want to be there. Yeah. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Um, well, there are a lot of people out there who are listening to this and uh, they're probably going to be taking very careful notes. <coughs> and, and speaking of a lot of people out there, a lot of people are, are stuck at home, you know, obviously with coronavirus. And there's one uh, girl who's stuck at home with coronavirus on her birthday and can't celebrate her birthday. Oh, no. Um, so Emily Furman, uh, she just wants you guys to know it's my birthday today. And despite being stuck in isolation, you guys have definitely made it much more exciting. Thank you, guys. Yeah, happy birthday, birthday um, Emily. Yeah, happy birthday, Emily. Go. Uh, and we've got another one here. Uh, Lucy Wood, if she could, says, how good of a swimmer do you have to be to swim at Bondi? Is there always a risk you can drown? Hopper. Uh, well, oh, you go, Hop. Yeah, Sorry. well, there's, there's, oh, always yeah, anyway, a, anyway, in. there's always a risk getting drowned um, anywhere, whenever you go in the water at, at any beach. So you need to be aware where the rips are and, and make sure you uh, take all those precautions. And, and you know, the, the best way is to, to float. And, you know, if you get yourself in any sort of trouble, don't try and swim too hard and, and wear yourself out. And that's the main thing that kills people is the... Uh, yeah. A panic and, and trying to swim and get exhausted. Well, the number one rule, okay, too, awesome. and, and there's no excuse for people over in the UK because I've been there a few times, is you do have red and yellow flags. Just go to a beach that's patrolled with lifesavers and lifeguards and swim between the flags, not on the side of the flags. And just um, know your surroundings, know the dangers. And, yeah, just if you're not a very confident swimmer, yeah. it's a skill. You can learn. Learn to swim. Um, it's a very Absolutely good skill to have. To swim. Everybody should learn to swim. Every kid should learn, should learn to swim. swim. And the, the beauty of it is a lot of people go, oh, but I don't like going on the beach. I don't like going on the pool. I don't like getting wet. But I, I'm a bit of a realist when it comes to situations where you could be on a boat when you're 30 years old in the Mediterranean and your boat starts to sink and you can't find your life jacket and you need to know how to float and know how to swim. So you might find yourself in these situations where you need to know how to swim. So teach yourself. It will save your life. Very good tips. If anyone doesn't know how to swim, now is a very good time to start. If you want to swim a fond eye anyway. Um, Emma Robinson says, hey guys, you are true legends. Stay safe from Emma in the UK. Um, MS Let mommy, says, let let's see Hoppo's dog. Um, they really want to see your dog, Molly from Charleston. Hoppo, is your dog anywhere in the hood? Oh yeah, she's around. Yeah, she is here. Where is she? Yeah. There yeah, we Bonnie. go. <laughs> and, uh, there we go. And Tiffany and Cara Adkins says, I've written a song about the lifeguard. How can I get it to you guys to hear? Love from Tazzy. Um, Hop, Tiffany, Hop, if you want to Hop send Hop it through to us on the... Hoppo's uh, <laughs> email. Hoppo's uh, email. Through to us, uh, on Just type Hoppo's email. Page. <laughs> and we'll make contact. We uh, we can't put Hoppo's email up, unfortunately. I think Hoppo oh, would, is awesome. sad about that, but we can't do that. Um, See, actually, that brings so me, we're going to be moving to the next video. To point. Um, I, I quite yeah, often it. get people asking how to be a lifeguard, and they message they message on Instagram, and it comes through the lifeguard account or my account, and and I think that. You know, if you really want to be a lifeguard, like there's other things to do than just ask for a job on social media. Um, yeah, so, yeah. you know, there's the Waverley Council website, has lots of details, get swimming training or get surfing. But, um, yeah, just, just asking for a job on social media is probably not the way to go. I don't think it's super yeah. professional for myself. So, yeah, um, yeah chase, well, up, chase up Hoppo's I, email and, and get on, get on <laughs> to Hoppo's email. Well, it's, adding on to what Dino's saying too. Is if you if you if you come to Bondi, knock on the door, introduce yourself, because potentially you might be working with the team. You know, be be professional, be confident, and yeah, who knows? Um, crazy things have happened. Awesome, that also a very good tip, and that's what you did as well, Max. You just kept on hassling them every single oh, day. Yeah, <laughs> I think I emailed you. Hopper a few times. Emailed Hopper a few times. Yeah. I still can't get rid of him. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to the next video. The next video is a mass rescue um, with help from some swimmers. Um, this is actually going to be featuring you, Dino. Uh, we are ready to go. We're crossing that video right now. Dino races to a large group of men, drowning just 10 metres from shore. Oh, shit. Well, done, yeah. There's a lot of guys that need my help. This guy would have needed to go to hospital for sure if someone wasn't there to hold him up. 
It's amazing the help we get from members of the public and local surfers. This day we had multiple patients, so you're trying to sort of weigh up everybody, work out who needs the help the most and keep an eye on everyone else. It's very tricky. So Dino, that's a pretty serious uh, situation there. Um, you know, what do you do when you're receiving help from the public? You know, in this segment it was helpful, but sometimes it's not. Um, how do you just sort of define when, you know, when it is helpful and when it's not, and what do you do in that circumstance? Oh, Steve, that's, it's such a, you know, such a, such a good question, but to use an analogy, like some days we're like firefighters and we are just got to sort of put out the biggest fire first. So, um, yeah, sometimes you paddle, you always go to the worst patient, the person in the most trouble. Uh, and sometimes you leave your rescue board with them and then you jump off and swim over and save someone else. And I actually saw young Noah last night doing a rescue on the show and he was stuck there with someone on his board, but he, he didn't have the confidence to leave them there and then swim away. So it's, yeah, it just comes mm. from practice and every situation is different and different lifeguards do things differently as well. So it's, mm. it's a really unique job we do where where we're just looking for the best possible outcome. And, you know, however you do that, it, it may involve yelling at a member or public or a surfer to help you yeah, out in that time. Definitely. And, and it's, yeah, just getting creative and, and keeping everyone alive. Right, so it's really up to that moment in time. You know, you're making split-second decisions around who's life to save and what's the priority. So it's a pretty pretty difficult scenario. Yeah, it's, it's really unpredictable and, and it's hard to train for this sort of stuff. And for us, I guess the best practice is, you know, going through those crazy times, generally over that summer period. And it just, like, it's just, just stuff happening all over the place. And it's, you know, I wish I could remember all the, all the weird and wonderful things that have happened. It all, it all turns into one. It all turns into yeah, one. Yeah, it all turns into one. And that's how Bondi Rescue came about. You know, I remember meeting with Hoppo going, oh, you know, before Bondi Rescue going, oh, they want to film a TV show about us. And, and you know that was that was a long time ago and if you look at the lifeguards now there's not many of us there that worked before the show started there's only a handful of guys that remember working before there was cameras there so it's like some of the guys they wouldn't even know what it's like so it's um yeah it's a long time ago <laughs> to put it in yeah, a, a very long uh, time bit ago a bit of perspective with maxi we always have a joke that I started September 91 and Maxie was born in September 91. So that's how far back. So <laughs> my, 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 all of me, all of me, Hoppo's lifeguard career. <laughs> 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 no, nah, nah, it's, it's pretty cool. We always and, have a laugh about that. Yeah, we always have and I still look younger that. than you. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I've got a few more comments from the guys on Super Chat. So, so one of the guys, uh, Harry Bob asks, because you guys are always look so friendly, do you guys ever fight? No, not really. I think we keep it professional down the beach. Um, there's only one case where I've seen two lifeguards and they go toe to toe, and <laughs> as an in uh, Johnny Robbo, <laughs> that was a few years ago. That was about ten years ago. But other than that. Um, you know, we all think we all get along. It's, uh, yeah, in the okay, lifeguard race, there was a bit of argy-bargy um, a couple of times. Uh, yeah. Harry's and, uh, uh, I think, Harry's oh, yeah, and Whippet. Harry's and Whippet. Yeah, exactly. Harry's and Whippet. Far out. Oh, actually, Harry's is always a happy-go-lucky guy, but he was pretty upset that day. Yeah, that's, that's a good one, Dean, actually. That was, that was full on. Competition, competition. Yeah. You guys are all pretty fierce competitors, so that makes sense if you come out at that time. Um, a question from Mariana Alford um, from North Carolina. Uh, did Jesse leave? What, what, what happened to Jesse? Yeah, Jesse's uh, yeah, he's decided to leave. So he, he finished up uh, this summer. So yeah, he's uh, moved on to other other things. Okay, we missed. All right, well that answers. We miss. He was a great yeah, human, a uh, great character. Jesse's been off uh, on parental leave. He he hasn't been around for the last what a couple of months, Hopper, You say? Yeah, yeah. Probably most most months. of the summer he hasn't been around. So he's had yeah. a, a, a a little boy. So he uh, took some time off and uh, with his family and everything. So and then decided, you know, he's um, that's enough for uh, being a lifeguard. So 
he's decided not to come right. back after the uh, time off. All right. Well, there you go, Mariana. You know the answer to that question now. Um, Sebby Childs from Wales says, hope you're all staying safe. Um, Kai Kwon Do says, hello from Texas. Uh, love you guys. Hey, Texas. Um, Texas. Just a four. He says, I want to become a lifeguard at Bondi. I live in the UK and I'm 17. Any tips for starting? It's my dream and I want to meet Jethro at least once. <laughs> um, well, they, they, you do have uh, programs over in the UK where you can get involved with your local surf club or um, lifeguard rookie lifeguard club. And basically, they have avenues to go anywhere around the world with it. You can go to American lifeguard, you come to Australia to lifeguard. And then if you do lifeguarding in Australia, come down to Bondi, introduce yourself face to face, get in touch with the guys and, you know, show us what you got in the surf and custom service and you might get a, a, a look in by Hoppo and the team if they're, if they're recruiting at the time. Yeah, I'd say go, definitely there's... get some get some time in the ocean, definitely get surfing, um, definitely do heaps of training, swimming. Uh, weights, all sorts of fitness, and yeah, but but that time in the ocean, a good lifeguard has has grown up literally spending a lot of time in the ocean, so they just know the waves and the rips and the currents intuitively. There you go, Jasta. Some excellent tips there for you, mate. Um, Shannon Chang simply says, "Darn it, I'm late." Um, clearly disappointed that you came on so late, but Shannon, it's okay. We got you. Um, Irie Glenzo says, "Hi from Ireland." Can you guys do your best Irish accent? <laughs> <I'll vote>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Top, top, of, top of the morning to you. Top of the morning. Top to of you. the morning. <laughs> top, top of the morning. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning. <laughs> to say, oh, Steve, I um, was supposed to be in Ireland uh, in July. So anyone that's watching that was expecting me to be there, it's not cancelled. We're postponing it till um, 2021 if uh, with all these international bands of travelling, which is understandable. Everyone needs to stay at home. But um, we're also, yeah, so if you're thinking uh, we'll be there soon, <laughs> I'll try and get there as quick as I can. I, uh, awesome. I, worked, awesome. <laughs> I worked in Newquay in England. I lifeguarded for a season over there. And in the morning, I'd say, you're all right. And I'd say, right. yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Are you all right? And I'd say, yeah, yeah. And then someone else would go, you're all right. And I'd say, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Are you all right? And the next person. And so it was like, it was, but yeah, it's, that's a greeting. Ongoing joke. It. And it's one word. <laughs> you're all right. It is strange for us over here to be getting the accent. They're very hard to understand. As we saw in the last episode, the Irish accent for us Aussies is very, very difficult to comprehend. Now, we're going to be cutting to another video. Um, this is, uh, Maxi, you're in this one. Uh, I don't want to ruin it too much. So we're going to cut to this video pretty quickly and have a chat about it straight afterwards. Um, are we ready? Yeah, you, know, you can't afford to have a wasted trip. You got to stand it before you even get We need all our resources on the beach, ready to go when we really, really need it. Barely in the water, and Maxi is questioning his decision. As I'm paddling out there, I knew that they were sweet. You know, you run in like uh, David Hasselhoff from Baywatch, you know, everything just stops, everything's in slow motion. Mid paddle, you know that these people are sweet and you think to yourself, why am I here? What have I done? He's looking around for them, but as I predicted, they were standing up on the sandbank and walking back to shore. See, Max, you should have waited another two seconds. I was a bit embarrassed, like when you fall over in the street, you want to jump straight back up, you want to shake it off and pretend nothing was wrong. So kind of headed out the back and caught a wave in and acted like I was going out there to catch a wave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, five. Um, so, Max, you're getting brushed. Uh, yeah. yeah. What's that like? <laughs> oh, it's the worst. Like, Dino and Hobbo can back me up on this one. It's the worst feeling, um, especially... Like, I remember that day vividly. I remember it clear as day. The rip was going straight out. And from Hoppo's angle, you could see the bank, as you see in the video. And as soon as I hit the water, I just knew, like, yeah, I was like, what am I doing? Um, but yeah, getting, actually getting to the person thinking they're in trouble and then telling them telling you, no, nah, I'm sweet, like, go away. But you know that they're 
they're drowning. It's like if you hand them a cup of tea, they'll drown in it, mate. You're like, no, you're drowning. <laughs> get on the board. But that's when Dino was saying before, you, you sometimes you can be a bit assertive and you can get them on the board. You know, get on the board now and throw your weight around and then get them in. But getting brass just in general is is the worst. And coming in with no patient either. And you're taking a resource off the beach. So it's, um, you know, all lifeguards have dealt with it over the years. But, yeah, maybe not after 14 years of lifeguarding, um, I shouldn't be doing it as often as I did this summer, which is unfortunate. <laughs> well, I think, Maxie, I haven't seen that. Uh... Ride, right? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen that case of beer turn up my front door yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, are you, what are you drinking, mate, Crownies? <laughs> Mate, I might need some in this nah, isolation. Reshes. Fair dinkum. Reshes. Reshes. Corona <laughs> sales. The old school Reshes. Oh, too, too soon, Dean. Too soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're yeah, going to be so... questions now. Oh, yeah. when, when it comes to rescues, right, you know, you guys obviously are doing a lot of rescues and, and a lot of serious stuff happens. You know, sometimes you get in there on time, sometimes you don't. Uh, one of the questions is, how do you perform CPR on someone with a spinal? Oh, well, oh, hop, you go. Oh, well, with a spinal, we, we've got to look after the airway first. So if they're not breathing, we've got to go through the normal CPR and all the process that we do. So the spinal then becomes a secondary uh, uh, situation. So generally we'll, we'll do that once we stabilise them, then we move in and, um, and then stabilise their spinal injury. Yeah, try and okay. try and have some sort of management, but yeah, airway and and circulation and pulse is is number one priority. Awesome, thank you, Shannon Chang. I hope that answers your question. Um, Joey Kearney says your show is dope. Love from Chicago. How can I watch in the USA? Um, Joey, we don't have any answers for you to how to watch in the USA just yet, but stay tuned. We may have some of those answers shortly. Isn't, um, isn't, it, uh, isn't it on Netflix or Netflix, something? But they yeah, only got that's what season, I was say. season seven and eight, or the seven earlier or... seasons are on Netflix, but they don't have any of the later seasons on Netflix at this stage. Okay. Okay. Um, but yes, you can stage. watch someone on Netflix um, in some seasons uh, in the US at the moment. Um, uh, the cat lover 1500 says i have a question about mass rescues um who would you put first a child a teen or an adult this is from phoebe in the uk who is a huge fan i sort of touched on that before steve um you, yeah you go to the, the, worst the harbor, person. Isn't it? well it, no it's not you go to the person that looks like they're gonna drown or die the quickest it's and you generally know that pretty 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 quickly Mm. Hoppo, I saw there was yeah. some stuff last night. Hoppo paddled straight past someone um, on the show, and I think that that person who was struggling, they were actually pointing them out to sea because they knew yeah. that his partner was worse well. than he was. So it said, yeah, it doesn't matter, kids, age, sex, race. Yeah. We, we go to the person that's right. potentially going to die the quickest. Right, right, right. That is, uh, that, that makes sense. There you go. So there's your answer, Cat Lover. Um, Ren also asked the question, will USA Netflix ever get more episodes? Ren, we don't know that yet. I'm sorry we can't answer that question for you at this stage, but we will let you know when we do know. Maybe, um, maybe if people that want it that bad, maybe if you email or get in touch with Netflix, show that there, there's a bit of, um, you know, people are keen to keep watching more episodes, they might, you know, replenish it and put more on there. Who knows? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can only ask. Yeah, do um, Maxi. He kept and... asking all the time again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> I oh, no. um, Save for later. And then we, we, we have another question from Shannon Chang. She says, can you guys perform the blinding dance from TikTok? Does anyone oh. know what the blinding dance is? Nah. Oh, I know the song. I know the song, and I've seen bits and pieces. I know that the the critically un unemployed or whatever they they've done a few dances and stuff like that on TikTok. But yeah, I'm I'm the worst dancer. So I, Jose, I'm actually pretty good. The alternative he, he is she said, birds. Can, yeah. "Can you do the dab?" The dab. Would really like to see yeah. one of you do the dab. What was the, what was the dab? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I don't actually know what I think it's like, is it that? <laughs> I, I don't even it? know what it is. Jan, I'm sorry. We're all What's too it old. called when, uh, the, when they do this thing? The, what's Floss. that one called? The flossing. Floss. That's it. I... <laughs> flossing. Flossing. I'd probably throw my back out my head. Oppo's um Oppo's pretty good at Thunderbirds. Maybe ask him to do the Thunderbirds. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Can you do a Thunderbird? <laughs> <laughs> you look like Frankenstein. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so next we have um Okay, next we have we have another video. Oh no, have we got any more videos or is that that's all that's all the videos for the moment? Um, and also Rachel2244 says, what happened to Jethro and Kia? Um, Jethro, they're both working. Um, so um, Rachel, they are uh, sadly um, not working here today. today. Working today. Um, you can bring it one earlier. Uh, uh, okay, hold on one second. So now we're going to be going a shout out to Super Chat. Thank you guys. You guys are nailing it in Super Chat. If anyone has any more what questions, happened? I hope we haven't missed any. Um, we're just going to go back and check to see if any were missed. Um, but as we go into that, um, we are going to be going into Never Have I Ever. Are you ready? So we're going to be moving Super Chat to the end of this, guys, so you know. Uh, but we're going to be going straight into Super Chat. Uh, at the end. So, never have I ever told Hoppo I was sick but couldn't come in because I was actually hungover. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> no? <laughs> Do you know? No, no, seriously. <laughs> oh, I'm, not much, I'm not much of a drinker, so um, you should be okay. drinking on shift. But yeah, I don't think I've ever done that. But that, that's, that's, okay. that's the truth. I'm not, oh. not, not being uh, smarter so, or anything. Oh. No, 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 maybe, that's maybe good. Maybe in the early days, but... As I, as I get, as you, when you, when you're a lifeguard, you actually, you need to be fit and healthy to save people. Yeah. Like turning up it's to work worst. dusty and it's just, or even injured, it's, it's just not fun. And for me, there's, yeah, I, I sort of plan my nights out around work. So if I have to work on the weekend, yeah. generally I try and avoid it. Particularly as and I get like, older, I just can't deal with it. Yeah, and and the last, especially the last couple of years, being a casual, um, you know, sometimes I work on the weekends when Hoppo needs me, or as a firefighter, I work shift work. So, you know, sometimes my days off are midweek, so um, I don't have the the teasers of the the Saturday Sunday nights out as as some of the normal people that have Monday to Friday jobs have. Right, right, right. No, no temptations. No temptations. All right. Um, Never have I ever been stung by a blue bottle. Oh, I've been stung, I've been stung thousands. thousands. Yeah, thousands. I've both. I've been stung thousands. a few times. <laughs> yeah. Does it, does it hurt? Blue bottle. Both on the water and on the land. <laughs> um, okay. Never have I ever, ever rescued somebody who was nude. I have. Yeah, I've had a nude one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see. You know, I, no. don't, I don't think I have. No. Okay. Many topless girls. Um, the, the guys, the guys, the guys' um, undies were around his ankles, so still his bait and tackle and everything was hanging out. So I classed it as a nude. <laughs> Back in the nineties, <laughs> we had the. the uh, it, we had the uh, Chadwick models used to have their uh, Christmas party, so. That wasn't bad then, back in the nineties. We caught one of those. Actually, I, pick, I picked up a naked dead, pick? naked dead body, which is, uh, I guess, a rescue. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, that sounds that was, terrible. That wasn't fun. Oh, yeah, I've, yeah. I've had a few of them. I've had a few of them. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> when you, yeah, it's pr fairly a morbid conversation. Let's keep it. Let's keep yeah. it happy and. Lighthearted and yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a that's a darker side of our job. And um, yeah, yeah absolutely. If, if you're uh, underwater for a week, generally your clothes fall off. That yeah. is that is pretty insane. Um, okay, now the next one. If you can put your hand up, if you have done it, and and don't be hand up if you haven't. Um, never have I ever needed rescuing. I've I've, I've um, never I've needed. Been 
Nej va? Så... Oh, when, I was young, when, I was younger, when I was younger, I had to get rescued. When I was eight or nine um, in Botany Bay, I had to get rescued. Jumped off a sailing boat and uh, the rescue boat in the sailing world had to pick me up and rescue me out of the middle of Botany Bay. Right, that sounds uh, terrible. But obviously, would, that, would, you, would you say that could have been a catalyst for you to become a lifeguard when you are rescued? You're like, oh my God, I was that yeah, close. No, definitely, definitely, because I, I was... Um, I was sailing at the time and I was a spy, I didn't do surf life saving nippers and my sister was and I hated sailing so right. much and I used to always be petrified I was going to get sucked out to sea and never come back and it, it, the anxiety and the, the build up so much that I actually, the wind changed and started pushing me out to sea. I actually jumped overboard not thinking and um, having, I had to get rescued and then I had a year off sport and then I went into South Maribu nippers at, um, when I was 10. So that was the wow. tipping point. It, of, of of wanting to do nippers in a way because I knew I had to wow. uh, be safe in the water. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, uh, and also we've got a question here. Um, MS says, where is the money from the Super Jack going? I know you'll work with a lot of great organizations. Molly from Charleston. So you guys know at the moment it's going to actually creating these conversations. So we've never actually done them before. So but at the moment we're using it to try and improve the live streams, improve the quality, the speed, and actually make these something that we're going to do every single week. So if we're lucky, we might be able to do this weekly. If not, it might only be these two and it might end here. So stay tuned uh, and we'll let you uh, find out more because you'll see if this is, is, is this live hangout next week or not. Um, so uh, going back to um the next question um never have i ever set off a shark alarm and there wasn't a shark yeah i have yeah i have too once we had uh um, good... it was just out of control on on a christmas day going back years now but it was just uh we were losing control we had to go home it's getting eight o'clock and it was going to get dark. Uh, the only way to clear the water was to put the shark alarm on, and so we put the shark alarm on to uh, save lives. Yeah, well, uh, I did one last safety week. Safety first. There was one last week when we had to close the beach, and um, we started at six in the morning. And some people, because it's still quite dark, because the daylight saving ends next or well, this weekend, um, there was still runners running in front of the lifeguard tower at six thirty um, the other the other morning when I was working. And the beach is closed for, for, for everyone. And um, just, to, just to show them that we, we mean business, uh, as they run past the tower, we flipped the alarm, scared them a bit, and they got off the beach. So you can use it to, for that, and you can use it to also alert other lifeguards in the water if there's something major going on too, which I've done before. Um, you know, people have been training, and then you, there's a resource and you need backup. So, yeah. Good to know, because I've always wondered whether there was always a shark every time I had the shark alarm. So at least now I know not to. Nine times out, out of ten. Nine times out of ten there is. In the water. Yeah. Sounds more like eight out of ten or seven out of ten. But I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah, we can stick with nine <laughs> if you want. Uh, whatever you want to tell yourself. Um, so, uh, never have I ever been pranked by another life <laughs> Always. Yeah, always. Constant. Can you, oh, can you share with us one of your uh, most memorable pranks, uh, Maxi? Oh, Being pranked. Probably probably Bob Mirovic, the big boxer. Like, still to this day, um, even though a lot of the guys were in on it, I was 17 at the time. Um, I had no idea who he was. But the fact that he came back three times and the third time he wanted to fight me and I hit under the desk, uh, <laughs> that is legit. That was legit. I was, uh, I was petrified. And um, when he pushed me outside the second time, he actually pushed me quite hard and <laughs> left, a, left a bit of a bruise. So a lot of people don't realise <laughs> he, he did go pretty hard on me um, on and off the camera. So out of all the pranks, wow. that was probably the best one um, where it still sticks with me today. God, you can, and speaking of that prank, you can actually watch that on the YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe on the Bondo Rescue YouTube channel. You can watch that. Um, uh, thank you, Maxie. That's a great, great memory, actually. Uh, Dina, how about you? What's your, uh, memory of your worst prank on you? Oh, worst prank. Um, oh, yeah, I, the worst pranks probably aren't suitable for this forum. 
<laughs> Good point. Okay, that's all right. We can move along from that one. Uh, how about you, Hoppo? Oh, I suppose the worst one I was that they did the 30 day challenge and um, we uh, got con to go around to curb boxes and there's all this food and alcohol and we weren't meant to be drinking, we weren't meant to be eating certain foods and we didn't know the whole place was GoPro. And even uh, I was, I didn't even wake up that there was uh, flowers in the middle of his table and I thought that's weird, he's got flowers there, but the, the mics were all bugged into the, in the flowers. so. Yeah, we got stitched up pretty heavy. That if, one. Maxie was involved. That's that all his fault. Yeah, people, people that want to watch that actually, uh, box Kerbox put it up on his Instagram yesterday or the day before of um, that whole snippet. So check out Box's Instagram. You'll see that video that Hoppo's talking about. But uh, I think the worst one I've heard over the years. I'm not going to name names or, or or anything, but the blue bottle stitching in the in the cozies that was. Ooh. <laughs> That's, oh, uh, yeah, that's that, terrible. Yeah. That, yeah. that, 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 that happened, that happened uh, years ago. That, that happened years ago, uh, well before the TV oh. show. I was, I was only early days, early 90s, I think. And uh, one oh, of the guys God. who got a bit upset with another guy, so he dried out the blue bottles and then put it in his in the seam of his cozies and just sewed it back in them. nice and neat. Yeah, sewed stitched, it, stitched it back in. And um, obviously... Oh. Once they're uh, they're not stinging once they're uh, been dried out, but the problem is, it's a hot day, and you know you start sweating and things, and then uh, next thing, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't sting, but it gives you this crazy itch. So this guy is just rubbing himself down there because it's itching so bad. He just didn't know what was going on, and uh, that was a pretty good prank back in the day. Yeah. That, that's and, and terrible. Last one. Last one. The last one, uh, Laurie Williams. Um, someone got Laurie Williams with the prawn heads in his car. He, oh, someone got yeah. his car keys on a really hot summer's day, got old prawn heads and put them in his air conditioning duck and let him sit there all day in the car park. And then as he drove out of the car park, he actually had to sell his car. It was pretty unfortunate, actually. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. He, he couldn't sit in the car. It was that bad, the smell. Um, so there's been a few good ones over the years, and I, I think Dino, what Dino is but not for this chat, but I think the one that Dino is talking or thinking about, yeah, it's a, there's some been some good ones over the years. Wow, that sounds terrifying. Um, okay, next question. Um, never have I ever thrown up on a roller coaster. Yeah, I don't. I, I I get a bit I get a bit dizzy. I'm not much of a roller coaster fan so it's yeah, probably me all right i'm in spew but i feel um, <laughs> okay next one never have i ever been so sunburned that i could not wear a shirt oh yeah oh yeah i've been pretty sunburnt in the day yeah i've been yeah. pretty sunburnt too i remember going to school it, as a kid just on a monday every monday with my back just roasted from being down the beach all day but uh, yeah, yeah you know, that was a long time it. ago. It wasn't wasn't much sunscreen back in the uh, back in the early eighties. Well, I That's remember true, back right? in the like day a... when I started uh, working that they used to get down there and the old Neil McDonald's there used to have the, the spray gun. It was just oil. They just spray, spray people oil, with oil, yeah. and they, they'd be lying on the beach just frying themselves back in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> wow. That is impossible Some to imagine safety. now. So literally the same oil that you use to cook your food, people will be spraying Coconut on themselves oil. to cook their skin yeah. so they could look more beautiful. Isn't that insane yeah. to imagine that today? Wow. I wonder how they're uh, all going now. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised though, Steve. There's still a lot of heat stroke and heat exhaustion cases on the beach. Even, you know, that's probably our second or third biggest thing as lifeguards, not only rescues, but people cooking themselves from all over the world coming to Bondi and not drinking enough water, not eating enough food, not wearing sunscreen and not wearing Yeah, they're hats usually hung over so. as well. They, you, yeah, they've been yeah, out so the night before. They haven't, eaten, they, haven't, a few things. they haven't had anything to drink and then they're lubing themselves up in oil and then next minute they think they're having a heart attack or they pass out and it's like, oh, you just haven't had, you haven't had, you need a litre of water right now. There's a very important thing. I think people actually forget to bring water to the beach, right? They bring the towel, they bring the sunscreen, but not everyone actually brings water with them, not realizing that they're literally yeah. lying there dehydrating. So that is a really good point. Um, yeah. Okay, we've got two more questions here. Um, never have I ever been skinny dipping. 
I've skinny dipped a few oh. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> skinny dip, <dipped>, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're good. Um, another one. Um, never have I ever been yelled at by my boss. Oh. Hop, um, I don't think I've only seen Hoppo yell once, but it was, I can't remember what the situation, but it, Hobbo's always, whenever me and Jesse or I've done something wrong, he's always been, um, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed, which hurts even more. So, you know, he doesn't give you much <laughs> sometimes, Hop. But, you know, when the, when he says even more little, um, you know, you're, you're, not in a, you're not in a good spot. So, um, yeah, you've been a bad boy. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully I haven't upset him lately. But I think early <laughs> days there was a few situations where, there was a head was shake the, on the show last night, Maxi. I could see him going like this. <laughs> no, the, I think the worst one, the worst one where actually where you looked at me and you were you were disappointed um, was when we got the rhino for Christmas and I smashed yeah. the board rack. I smashed the side of the bike and we had to give it away again. It was a, that was, yeah, that was right. a hard day. Yeah. That First was a day to ride. That was, that was uh, yeah, I... Don't want to live that one now. I was, I could see the the pain in your soul, mate. You, <laughs> Maxi, didn't you run over some kid's leg rope and start dragging him to yeah, the beach? Yeah, with Hoppo in the boat? <laughs> yeah. So we're going to a recess, and uh, Beardy and Hoppo are in the back, and it was a really busy day. Um, there was people everywhere, and there was a there's a surf group sitting on the beach, and they had all their boards all over the path where we drive along, and the kid that had his board there, I had to drive over it because we're going to resuscitation and it's like, go, 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 go. So I actually, as I ran over it, the leg rope must have like popped up and hooked around the, the toe ball. And th- we actually had footage of it, but I don't know where the footage went, uh, it just disappeared. But um, the oh. kid got dragged for about 20, 25 meters um, by his leg rope. <laughs> oh my snapped. gosh. And um, Hoppo, wow. Hoppo, we rocked up to this recess, and Hoppo was white as a ghost. I was white as a ghost, and um, <laughs> because we had to keep we, we we had to keep driving, so we went back and see the kid was the kid was sweet. The kid was um, in good spirits. I think the mum was a bit upset, but but the kid was kid was yeah. thought it was a good ride. But um, but yeah, Hoppo and <laughs> Beardy were they were a bit upset. I'll never forget the kid. Like- I'm, I'm trying to tell Maxi to stop, but he's probably he's thinking to keep going because we're going to a recess. But I never go, forget go, when he go, stopped. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kid, the kid looked up, and I thought, oh, here come the parents, they're blowing up. And then the kid looks up and said, that's the best ride I've ever had. Oh, man. <laughs> I reckon I was doing 80. I was doing 80. And the kid, like, it was enough for the leg right to snap. But that was, I reckon that was about 11 years ago now. Ten years ago. Wow, yeah, a long time ago. Oh, you were still, I think you were still a trainee then, were you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was. I was 18, 19, 18. Was that, yeah, was that your third year or fourth year trainee? <laughs> <laughs> third. Mate. Okay, we got third. one more question, and then we're going to go into uh, chat. So, um, last question is: Never have I ever cried at a Pixar movie. Cool. Uh, yeah, I have. Um, yeah, I'm a cry. That up got me. No, and, uh, Fast oh, and the Furious. No, I think so. Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Fast and the Furious. <laughs> when um, Paul Walker, you know, that they how they split off. That's pretty sad. Um, that, that's jump. not a Pixar movie. I've cried in. I've cried in Gran Torino. Gran Torino. <laughs> Gran Torino. I've cried in. I've cried in Boris Gun. Do you know? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I tear up. The ending. Yeah. yeah, and and, and Hoppo, we we claim that you don't tear up at movies ever. Oh, look, a, a little bit of a tear up here and there. It's, it's rare. Though. The, well, which movie? The, the, the throat gargle. Which, the, 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 the... <laughs> which, which movie do you remember crying ever last, Hoppo? I don't know. I can't remember now. Maybe was it? Might have been Ghost. Was it a little bit of a choke up? Was it in Ghost? Yeah, Ghost. <laughs> that is a good one, actually. It's very emotional, particularly the um, <clears throat> the ceramic scene. Um, Okay, guys, we're going to be moving on. Before we move on, look, there's a lot of very strong requests for people to see your cat, Maxi. First of all, what is the name of your cat? Second of all, can you bring your cat to the screen? Hold up. Uh, cat's name's Nala. It was a rescue cat, and she's pretty cute. I'll go try and grab her. Hold up. Okay, thank you. 
There's a lot of requests for the cat. That's a serious cat, cat request. <laughs> this is, this is, you guys are going crazy for the cat. All right, here we go. Yes, there's Nala. Yeah, Nala's oh, is a rescue cat. cat. She's two years old. Yeah, two years old. So she was a year old when we got her. Um, and yeah, we just picked her up from a from a rescue shelter, and she's the most affectionate cat. Oh, gotta get. She's gotta go. But yeah, she's the best cat. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cat. Super affectionate. <laughs> yeah, she loves you, Maxi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nah, she's um, it, it's, yeah. Cool. Oh, I'm a bit of a cat lover. I do love dogs, but um, because I'm in a one bedroom apartment in 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 eastern suburbs, it's a bit hard to have a dog. So, cat was the next best thing, and yeah, we love it. Me and Talia. All right. Now we're we're gonna we're gonna jumping into this. It's actually we're going a bit over in time. Uh, we're gonna go over ten minutes. I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, but we're gonna quickly be going into some of the final questions in super chats. Um. Are you ready? First of all, Libby Reeves says thank you. She's very thankful for the time that you guys have put into uh, being here. Thank you, Libby. Um, Echo Doll Six says, which other lifeguard would you least like to be stuck in isolation with, and why? Oh, Reedy, probably, probably Reedy. Yeah, he's. Yeah. <laughs> he's... And, and he cannot sit yeah, still, yeah. Reedy. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, he cannot yeah, yeah. sit still. <laughs> he has got ants yeah, in his pants. Hundred yeah. mile an hour. Yeah. How about, how about you, Hoppo? Yeah, it'd have to be Reedy. He's starting to repeat himself too, so you just you hear the same thing over starting, and over and over. He's starting, starting to lose it, is he hot? <laughs> Ma so Mario so would be the best. He'd just be smiling up there. and talking Italian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Emma Robinson says, um, oh, when will we get to see the rest of season 15? Emma, it depends on what country you're in. I'm sorry that we can't answer that question at this stage. We're trying to answer that question for you. Hopefully we'll have a question, an answer for that by next week. Let's see. Um, Julia Mayhopper says, is it possible to watch Bondi Rescue in Austria? Greetings from Austria. Again, same answer, Julia. Sorry about that. Um, Katie Cantwell says, hope you're all staying safe. Lots of love from Scotland. It is a weird time, but we all need to stay strong from Katie. Mm -hmm. Katie, it's definitely a weird time um, for everybody uh, in the world. So I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and well. Um, Emma Robinson, what's your favorite prank? We actually answered that one. I um, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Shannon Chang says, Shannon Chang uh, says, does Dino like the new surfing regulations? Oh, very specific question. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I, I uh, but it's it's really difficult because if people are doing the right thing, they should be able to surf. But unfortunately, at Bondi. We didn't have people doing the right thing. So it's, it's, it's this catch 22, right? Um, if we could all do the right thing, we'd, we'd maybe be able to surf. But because Bondi is such a, such a tourist destination, it, uh, it appears that we can't. So it's banned for everybody. Yeah. Mm, that is a bummer. Um, I did bummer. manage to Shannon. take my kids away. Uh, on the weekend, where somewhere where you're allowed to surf, and I, I took them surfing, and that was a couple of hours up the coast in a much quieter spot, uh, Avoca Beach, just beautiful. Right. And, and speaking of surfing, one single tip in 15 seconds: what is the best tip for learning to surf? Love from PA from Amanda Dubs. The best Practice. tip for learning to surf. Practice. There we yeah, go. Amanda. Yeah, just keep Practice. getting out there. Yeah. Start off with a bigger board, a um, bit of buoyancy, and then uh, you know get practice getting up, going across, and then um, gradually go down sizes to suit your height. And yeah, just enjoy it. It's a it's a good sport. Um, if you're not very confident, try and stay away from other people when you're learning, because um, we ha we've had a few injuries over the years, some bad ones, bad fin chops. Yeah. So if you're not confident, just um, stay away from people. And if you are going to go to a beach where there's flags, make sure you stay out of the flagged area. Steve, on my right. YouTube page, I did a, a couple of uh, learn to surf videos. Um, they're uh -huh, more uh -huh. aimed. They're aimed for kids, but definitely applicable for adults, beginners as well. So I've got two learn to surf videos on my YouTube page, Dean Gladstone. Okay, so if you go to Dean Gladstone on YouTube, I believe it actually is youtubecom slash Dean Gladstone. Um, you'll be able to find those videos there. Um, so check those out. Um, okay, we're going to run through a few quick ones. 
Um, the drink sustainability says, uh, do you guys lifeguard year round or you take it or do you take a few months off? Um, no, it's all year round. Yeah, Bondi, Bondi, 365. Now, now Tamarama as well, I think. Uh, Tam is open all year round as well. So, yeah, we work all year round. Wow. There we go. Ren says, do you all speak any other languages than English? I hope I could speak uh, Spanish. <laughs> you want to give us the Spanish Matty, line, I work. Matt, Matt, Matt speaks a lot of jibber. Yeah, je suis des légendes à papa français. Oh, very good. Uh, I, I did. I worked in Bali for Bondi Rescue Bali, and I've been to Bali about twenty times. So I reckon I've got maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty Indonesian words in my vocabulary. A lot of actually, Matt. Okay, give us a sentence. Pretty good on the Bahasa too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, salamat pagi yeah. is is good morning. Abakaba is how are you? And um, some go. counting, yes and no. Um, tidak terima kasih, no thank you. Yeah. And uh, just some Hoppo. simple greetings. Hoppo. Um, there we go. Hoppo dia, yeah. hopo dia, dia gila. Hoppo is crazy. <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Very smooth. You guys, honestly, multilingual, clearly. Um, uh, okay, great. Uh, the next one. Okay, let's see. Maxo, can you come to Maxi? Can you come to Ohio soon? I want to meet you. Says. Leo Pardgal, um, Max, are you going Joey to go Kearney to the US? Says, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying. So uh, Live, Learn, Survive is in UK, but we're trying to get to Canada and we're trying to get to the US. So bear with us. Um, this is a bit of a setback with the COVID-19, but we are aiming to get to the US in 2021. So hopefully we get over there. Okay. But we'll go visit as many people as we can. Okay. Now, a very important question from Ari Goodsir. Have you ever seen a UFO over the water? Oh, that's a great question. Oh. <laughs> very important. Yeah, I, no, not, not, not nothing where I've been scared. You see, I think I've seen a weather balloon once flying over. But other than that. There we go. Okay. Oh, so I think that's a no. Um, um do you have any chips uh jishwa is so done with you says do you have any chips on training for an open water ocean swim you have 15 seconds for tips open water ocean swim dane you're the you're the Sw expert swim, the swim in the open water <laughs> uh, <laughs> as well as swimming in the pool um yeah you, you want to be training at least i'd say four or five times a week but yeah, definitely train for train for your conditions Change your conditions. Okay, beautiful. Um, uh, Hoppo, can you name every lifeguard from Bondi Beach? <laughs> what now? Or since I started, <laughs> you, you just say yes or no. Actually, do you think it's, you, you, are you capable, or could you rattle it off right now in in uh, in thirty seconds? The current oh. ones, nah. <laughs> Probably yeah. not. Too hard. <laughs> uh, okay. Doc, Dr. Luke Hand says, what is the funniest reaction you've ever had to the green whistle? Oh, yeah, I've, there's been some fun, funny ones over the years. The ones that they've captured on Bondi Rescue have been quite good. Um, you know, people spilling out all their current affairs and current things that are they're in their lives. Yeah. They, they they tell you the whole life story and and all the dramas and all the yeah, it's some saucy stuff. Some people release it's from saucy their, stuff. When they're uh, some saucy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of inhibitions. Sorry. Hop. Can, can you give us one example of a saucy memory that has been revealed? Oh, it's not for this chat. There's, there's one, um, <laughs> there was one that actually featured Jesse. Uh, Jesse tells a story quite well. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little bit rude. So I'll, uh, I'll keep it. Okay. I'll keep it PG. All right. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to, we're going to wrap it up now. So thank you everybody for, uh, for all of your comments, for all of your questions. There's so many that we're trying to answer. Uh, these guys have done a great job in answering these questions um so we we did our best to answer i hope we've, we've answered a lot of them for you um so moving on to the end um so we're going to wrap up this just to clarify we ran a competition last week um where you know people had to take a screenshot of their favorite part of the episode and tell us why they loved it 
Uh, if you missed it, it's probably because you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel or following our Facebook page or Instagram. So make sure you do that. Um, there was many amazing entries. Uh, you know, lots of love for the new recruits and their authentic stories and their rescues. Uh, lots of love for Maxi and uh, obviously, you know, and the firefighting and, you know, helping, helping Australians sort of, you know, rescue their homes. Lots of loves for Harry's and the Irishman and their very hard to understand accents. Um, now we have a lot of honorable mentions. Uh, I'm gonna mention five here. Justin you know, Dugas, thank you, honorable mention from Facebook. Trisha Brown from Facebook. Sophie Cotton from Facebook. Um, XX Dime from Instagram and Bondi Rescue Edit from Instagram. They were all amazing entries, but there can only be one winner, which is Avery um, via Instagram. I hope we pronounced that correctly. Uh, we'll be reaching out to you. Uh, we don't have time to read out your uh, post, but it was a beautiful post. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, for your lovely words about the team and about the show and about what everyone yeah. does. Round of applause. Well done. Avery. Um, so, and of course, special thanks to Hoppo, to Dino, to Maxi for your time here. We really appreciate you taking time out from the beach and taking time out from your very busy lives to share your life with uh, the fans. They're very, very appreciative of this time. Um, stay tuned, guys. We should be having a live stream again next week. Uh, we'll confirm that in the next 24 hours. Um, and if it is, it will hey, be at Steve, the same time, quick same channel. Yes, hey, go for Steve, it. Steve, you know the, 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 those live Google Hangouts we did years ago? Did What, what year was yeah. that? Are they that on, was are 2013. They, yeah, I yeah, Maxie actually, you and can. I so, shaved my head on, on one of those when we were yeah, doing it. And I, I think, uh, I, yeah, I remember doing yeah, that. I think that, so, actually. Yeah, yeah there's some. We used to go into the Google headquarters in the city. Yeah, go, go into was, Google, yeah. 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 So, yeah, it'd be interesting. But, you know, the, people could watch that and see, see how we've aged. Um, but, but, yeah, there, I remember is, having, how I've aged. getting a haircut <laughs> online. I, I don't have that much hair now. So uh, I wouldn't be volunteering that again. So that was that it's, was uh, two that's for anyone who who is not aware, we first started doing these hangouts in two thousand and thirteen. That was the last time we did them. And in fact it's exactly the same group here. So we've definitely all aged and got greyer and older with time, but still look just as beautiful and fresh <laughs> as a daisy. Um, so as far as those videos that do exist, we will find them for you. We will create a playlist so you can watch all of those. So you can watch these new ones and also watch the old ones. We'll stick them in there so anyone can watch them. And Dino, I'll make sure you can you can see it as well. I'll send you the playlist. Just, yeah, saying, um, just going to quickly add something. I know we've got to go, Steve, but anyone out there that's watching yeah. that want to get in touch with me, Dino or Hoppo through socials or whatever, um, you know, you're not alone through this ISO stuff. So, you know, chin up and just get in touch and let us know if you've enjoyed yeah. the chat today. And stay yeah, strong. Just keep in touch. Stay strong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everyone who's uh, struggling, you know, I hope you're staying sane. Again, reiterating what Maxie said, this is very serious times for everybody. Everyone is stuck at home. Everyone is in the same predicament, regardless of what country you're in. So this is a pretty interesting and unifying moment for all of us to stick together and, and uh, you know, and uh, be the best people we can be in these difficult circumstances. Thank you for Maxi for highlighting that. And thanks again to everyone no for being involved. Um, a pre reach out to these guys. Cool. They're all available on Instagram uh, and Facebook, some of them. Um, so make sure you track them down. Make sure you follow them. And uh, we'll see you uh, if everything goes well next week. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful All the day. best. See you, guys. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye.